What is a one and 1000 year flood event? Over the past five weeks, we've seen five different areas across the country experience one in 1000 year flood events. So what's going on and could it happen here in Chicago? Joining me now is Scott Lincoln, Senior Service Hydrologist with the National Weather Service in Romeoville. Scott, let's get right into it. Tell me what a one in 1000 year flood means. Well, for the Chicago area, it kind of depends on the duration that you're talking about. If you're talking about a shorter duration rain, like about three hours or so, um, that's about 5.8 inches of rain. And if you stretch that out into a 24 hour period, like a one day rain, um, it's about 11 inches. So compared to some of the recent rain events in the Southern United States, where they had similar uh, magnitude rainfalls, um, for us, just because we tend to get less rain over the course of a year, those values are a little bit lower. It's, it's really, it is sometimes difficult to think about because, you know, you see that big number and you think there's going to be all these years in between having rainfall of that magnitude. But in reality, you technically can get uh, really extreme rain like one year after another. It just, it could be chance. You know, think of it like rolling uh, a handful of dice. You can give, you can roll a six and then you can roll a six the next time, but then you might not roll a six for, you know, 25, 30 rolls. So you were mentioning Chicago and what would happen if we got a one in 1000 year flood event and you mentioned some of the, the criteria for that. Mm -hmm. But conceptually, what would that mean for the city, for the residents, uh, the infrastructure of the city? Well, I mean, it certainly wouldn't be a good thing. Right. Um, you know, that amount of rain, uh, you know, just anywhere, uh, the, you know, it's it, the, the infrastructure is not going to be designed to handle it because it's so cost prohibitive to design infrastructure for some huge flood. And, and to be honest, you'd have to save so much green space, you almost wouldn't have a city at all because you'd have to have so much space for all that water. So, yeah, it wouldn't, it wouldn't be good. We could probably think to some of our, uh, you know, serious but less serious than a one in a thousand chance event uh, some some floods that have happened recently think you know 2020 2013 um even if people have been around longer 1976 1954 some of those heavier rain events that have hit the city i i think it would be very similar to that maybe just worse and more widespread so you know the expressways that there are the low spots are, would probably all be flooded we'd have all kinds of you know low spots in the city that typically accumulate water would all be flooded. We'd probably have structures that are flooded, at least in their basements, if not maybe even into the first floor of some, depending on where they are in the city. And it also, depending on antecedent conditions, whether or not it's been wet leading up to the event, we, we could quite possibly get the deep tunnel and reservoir system filled, which would mean a big rise on the Chicago River and potential flooding you know, of the river walk and maybe even some of the buildings along the Chicago River. So. No, it, it, by, it certainly wouldn't be good anywhere this rain happens. And we'd, uh, you know, it's, it's unfortunately maybe more of a, of a question of when as opposed to if. When we have a flood mm -hmm. like that, what does it mean for Lake Michigan? Uh, well, I mean, f from, from what, uh, you know, from what we know, it's, it's not a great thing because the sewer is combined. So that is both wastewater and rainwater all going into the same pipes and the same deep tunnels and the same reservoirs. So it, when that ends up in the river, it's, you know, it's basically contaminated water. And if the river gets so high that it starts to cause flooding, um, you know, MWRD and the Corps of Engineers work together to release some of that water into the lake. But the, you know, the good news is that they, they're constantly like been adding, you know, capacity to reservoirs. There's more capacity, you know, coming online in, in future years, which reduce the amount of that combined uh, sewer water and rainwater that goes into the river. And we've already seen, you know, rises on the Chicago River uh, being kind of reduced, uh, either where we're not getting rises on the river after rain events that we maybe once would get a rise. And we're also seeing, um, you know, events that maybe would cause a big rise or causing more of a small rise. Your job is to basically understand the rivers, the flow of water across Northeast Illinois and Northwest Indiana. Tell me, you've been doing this for a long time. What have you seen change uh, that we have studies on that you've noticed in terms mm -hmm. of how much rain we get, the rivers, any changes that you've seen? Uh, yeah, sure. So I've been in this position just for a few years, but I've done a, you know, a lot of reading and studying on rivers in the area to kind of get 
uh, up to speed. And I mean, we're seeing some of the same things that are being seen all across the country. You know, you read things like the National Climate Assessment. They talk about rainfall trends increasing over large portions of the country. And in a lot of areas, that increase in rain isn't coming you know, on all types of rain, it's it's favored more that it's coming towards the heavier rain events that are becoming more frequent. And, you know, we're seeing similar things in the upper Midwest. And in fact, you know, rainfall in Northeast Illinois used to average about 35 inches. That was back, you know, like I said, the 1950s. Um, in the 2010s, it's a little closer to 39 inches, which doesn't sound like a whole lot, but that is changing the water balance of Northeast Illinois enough that area rivers have anywhere from 50% to 100% more stream flow than they did just about 50, 60 years ago. And finally, is there something that an individual person can do to kind of um, prepare for a potential flood for their property? You know, we generally tell people it's just really, there's kind of two things. One, you need to make sure, you know, and check um, the flood history of your property. So there's, you know, different ways you can do that from looking at FEMA flood maps. You, there's a couple other groups out there that also produce maps of, of flood risk. And other than that, um, I think it's just important that people have multiple ways to receive warnings. So it doesn't even have to be, you know, flash flood warnings, river flood warnings. There's all kinds of weather hazards out there, you know, in Northeast Illinois. And so uh, definitely people having more than one way to receive that information. Uh, you know, we'll, we'll give them the tools that they need to, to hopefully, you know, get out of harm's way if we are to have hazardous weather. Great information, Scott. Thank you so much for joining me today. I really appreciate it. That's Scott Lincoln, Senior Service Hydrologist with the National Weather Service Office in Romeoville. Hey, if you like that video, be sure to subscribe to our ABC7 Chicago YouTube channel.